Hello, welcome to Starting Points. I'm your host, Jay Brenneman, bringing you the voices of change in your community and our region. Joining me today is Will Kohler, President of the Greater Erie Alliance for Equality. Will, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Jay. Uh, to start off, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, we know who you are, but um, are you an Erie, Na uh, Erie area native? Uh, tell us a little bit about your, um, your upbringing. Yeah, so I was born in Meadville, Pennsylvania, just a few miles south of here, and uh, went for an undergrad in uh, engineering really? in Penn State okay. after high school, and then uh, came back about five, ten years later, I think, for my master's here at Edinburgh University in social work. Okay, so you went from engineering. Yeah. Ended up in social work. Yeah. Why did you show <laughs> social work? How did that happen? Uh, well, I think I've always kind of had a heart of a social worker, and uh, what is a heart? What is the heart? I mean, I'm a social worker myself, social but what would you say yeah. the heart of a social worker? Is, uh, it, is it just that you have a heart, or is it <laughs> a little bit more that I have a heart? Well, I I think maybe a better way to say why I got away from engineering is that I couldn't stand all the numbers and the technical. You wanted something experience. with more. People interaction people. with people and I care about uh, people I look uh, for different relationships I have always been intrigued about uh, people from different areas of the world mm -hmm. different uh, religions uh, so I think that it was a draw to work with people that got me away from engineering and social work so you became a social worker mm -hmm. and what type of work did that lead you to? Because, because social work is really such a broad it is. field. Um, were you drawn to a certain uh, population or a certain group or a certain issue? Or did you find yourself somewhere and end, your, end up somewhere else? I think I was really drawn to the working in the mental health field. I think that that always intrigued me. Uh, and is there anything that, that, that led that to? It was an experience with family or friends, or just you saw the issue and how important it was? I think seeing how people uh, that struggle with mental health issues are treated so differently than people that struggle with physical uh, health issues. And just, I always felt like, well, if our mind is like an, any other organ of the body, why is that so treated so differently? And so I was always uh, attracted to uh, kind of finding out what made people tick, what made me different than other people. So, um, so where did that land you, job-wise? When I got out of the master's program here, I had been interning in family services, working with children that had been exposed to violence or uh, abuse in some way, and really enjoyed working with kids, uh, which was a surprise to me. I didn't think that I would enjoy working with kids. So I started there, and uh, about f three years later, I transitioned to uh, an organization called Erie County. Um, I can't even remember yeah. what the organization well, was. Well, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of they're practically alphabet agencies. Yeah, and they've got, yeah. Uh, ECCM. Yeah. Um, Erie County Care Management. There we go. Well, tell me a little bit about, so you started working with children first. Yeah. And did you feel you were equipped to handle to work with kids? Um, uh, often, uh, uh, you know, as a social worker, you may or may not land your first choice. Um, and or my own ex perception of working with veterans, I thought, well, there's no way I can work with veterans, even though I myself am a veteran. I didn't think I was really equipped to do that. Did you have any of those reservations when you were working with children, and then you found that it evolved? Or yeah, I think when. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think when I left the master's program here at Edinburgh, I think it's a great program, but I think that you learn your specialty and you learn your way as you kind of try different things out. So I was surprised that uh, working with children felt natural, and I wasn't expecting that. So it's that on the job, that experience, the one on one connections, a lot of what you learn and your own passion, your own heart. And when you were working with the children, you found that those skills just naturally meshed. Mm -hmm. um, and how long did you work in that capacity? Probably about uh, five years before I moved on to more adult mental health in a private practice environment. 
Um, tell me about that transi uh, um, transition from working with children to adults. Mm -hmm. um, was there special insight that you gained from working with children that helped you in working with the adults, or was it um, a completely different ball field, or is it pretty much the same? I think there are different issues, but I think that working with kids and adolescents, it was kind of a gradual progression. So I worked with l smaller children first and then worked with adolescents. Uh, and then uh, with adults, it really gave me a perspective to see this is the adults that I'm working with were once children and had experiences that have impacted who they are today. And so I think that that helped me understand them in a different way. Um, as you were working with the adolescents, the adults, um, did a lot of it or any of it go back to childhood? I mean, often we hear um, uh, the reason why somebody did something or the reason why they were this way or mm -hmm. the reason why you like this is because of some kind of experience that um, you had or was cemented uh, right. as a child. Do you th did you ever, uh, did you find yourself going back to that a lot or was uh, it more focused on the present there and then? So are you asking me if, it w if I was personally uh, invested because of my own experiences growing up and working with children? Is that kind of what you're right, asking? Right, so as, as you were working with the adolescents and adults, mm -hmm. um, how much did time did you, did you find working, exploring their childhood? How, how often did that exploration happen? Well, I think um, one thing that that reminds me of is that we are changing our focus uh, at, in the social work department from a family concentration to a trauma-informed care concentration. And one thing that we're learning as we're learning how to provide trauma-informed care to our clients as social workers is that um, it's not necessarily what's wrong with you, but what happened to you. And that oftentimes stems back to either one particular event or the way that you were uh, treated as a child or as an adolescent. So I found myself feeling like it was vitally important to understand that or for the client themselves to understand that before they could move forward. So they weren't necessarily acting in isolation. Um, uh, there's always something that, that thread that connects um, um, even possibly some uh, coping or uh, uh, um, resiliency skills, perhaps, that, mm -hmm. you know, not only just the, um, but tell me a little bit more about that uh, trauma-informed. When you say trauma or trauma-informed care, what does that mean? Because trauma, I mean, is that, um, again, going back to, we think physically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, tell me why that term and, and what does that mean? Well, there are all sorts of forms of trauma. I think probably um, the one that people are most familiar with maybe since 9-11 uh, or some other events or the um, Iraq war or it is post-traumatic stress disorder. So PTSD is kind of a, a word or initials that kind of fall off of everybody's uh, tongue these days. Uh, but trauma is something that impacts you in so many ways, whether it's uh, exposure to violence, whether it's personal, physical injury, or just uh, mental uh, abuse, or... There's a significant event effect or that event. Where you felt uh, that your life or the life of somebody that you were closest to was in, in danger. Um, now, Will, um, you're now working with an or uh, well, you've been working with an organization, but now you are the, the president mm -hmm. of a, an area organization. Um, the Greater uh, Erie Alliance for Equality, GEAE. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the mission of GEAE. So the mission of the Greater Erie Alliance for Equality is to work with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender population and their allies uh, to strengthen the voice of the LGBT population and to enhance our image through uh, educational uh, events, um, social opportunities, and uh, service events uh, throughout our community. So we're really about um, working with the LGBT population to build allies in the community uh, and address areas where that particular population are, may not have um, 
equal access or be treated equally. How long has the Greater Erie Alliance for Quality been around? So the organization has kind of gone through a number of name changes. This is actually the 10th year of our existence. We've only existed as the Greater Erie Alliance for Equality for five years. And uh, we originally started out as the uh, Erie Gay Pride um, Incorporate, Incorporated. What, what caused or precipitated that change? We were going through a time of leadership transition and we had really focused in on a pride event uh, picnic, or I'm sorry, a pride rally and uh, march down from, in Erie, we would leave from a bar on 18th and walk down State Street to the Perry Square and kind of have a celebration and a high visibility. And we were uh, organizing that for a number of years. And then um, we kind of moved from that event to a more um, education focus and building alliances with individuals and um, groups in Erie. So that change, a, a celebration, a coming together, uh, showing awareness and, and pride to the community, mm -hmm. Um, and giving the community a chance to participate and see and understand. Um, was there something that happened um, in the community or in society in general or something that um, helped create that change from uh, just a, a, you know, the, the Pride March to uh, in the day uh, to a, um, an ongoing educational and uh, alliance building. Was there something that was a, a broader feel or was it just something that just happened internally that you said, well, everybody thought, well, this is a natural growth? Well, I think that there are a number of excellent organizations that work with and for the LGBT community in Erie. Uh, currently, the Pride uh, Fest, as it's now called, uh, which was the March and Rally, mm -hmm. uh, is run by the Northwest Pennsylvania Pride Alliance. So they're still there. Yeah, they're, they're still, still there. happening. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about some of these educational uh, opportunities that, that GEA has mm -hmm. provided and is providing. Yeah. I think one of our earlier ones was a panel uh, that we brought in where we had someone from the FBI come in. Uh, the, the, there were a couple of attorneys uh, that came in and addressed some issues of safety for the LGBT community. So the hate crimes legislation is something that was relatively new to Pennsylvania and we didn't really have a lot of case law establishing what that was. So we wanted to give the LGBT community in Erie a chance to ask questions of the FBI and the police and attorneys and what does that mean, hate crime, and how does that offer protection or, or not? And so those were, that was one of the events. Thank you, Well, We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with Will Kohler from the Greater Erie Alliance for Equality. See you in a minute. Listen, I know you're upset, but it was just one date. And dating's like the stock market. Uh, there's uh, ups and, and downs and, and, and ups. And... So always buy low. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. I got no balls for losing. Sorry, did they make fun? Shocking throws at Rhode over time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. It'll be fine. 
Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org hello and welcome back to starting points i'm your host jay brenneman i'm here today with will kohler from the greater erie alliance for equality will before the break you were telling us about some of the uh, educational uh, uh, programs that the greater Erie alliance for equality was doing such as a panel with the FBI, other law enforcement, talking about hate crimes. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what a hate crime is, and then tell me, um, you know, I, I guess some people might be shocked that it is it still happening, you know, mm -hmm. and what what does that what does that mean? Sure. So the basic understanding that I have about a hate crime is that it's a first of all, it's a crime against an individual. So it's not just um, slander or um, ill will or something like that. Exactly. So it's an actual crime that's committed against somebody, but that crime is committed against them because of their particular sexual orientation, because of their race, because of their religion, uh, so that that is particularly based on who they are. Uh, so they're targeted because of who they are. And what came out of that discussion? Um, how frequent is, how bad is it, how um, what parts of our lives um, does it happen in? You know, work, family, uh, school. Well, tell me a little bit more about this. So I think it came about not only because of a recent or a change in legislation at that time, but also the, the community was wondering a, a lot. The, there were people kind of coming out of the woodwork at that uh, forum and saying, well, my place has been vandalized. My trailer has been vandalized and there have been names said about me. Is this a hate crime? Or um, this person was attacked coming out of this bar or this uh, establishment that's known to be um, catering to a particular population. And so is that a hate crime? So there were just so many questions and we really kind of learned from there that uh, legislation and policy doesn't necessarily change people's hearts or minds or tell them exactly what that means and how to gain that protection from that particular policy or legislation. So that's really guided what uh, the Greater Area Alliance for Equality seeks to do is that we realize people's hearts and minds don't actually uh, change overnight just because a particular piece of legislation has changed. Uh, or because a policy is written. So policy or legislation, it could be a big win. Yes. But until it is uh, felt and uh, owned by the greater community, the broader community, um, exactly. it's not really a total win. Yeah, I think we saw that last year with uh, marriage equality coming to Pennsylvania. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, um, you know we, we have marriage equality in the state. Um, it's, right now it's been going state by state across the country, largely through court battles. Um, tell me why we're not at the, you know, have we reached a finish line? You know, is this, um, what is still out there? Right, yeah. So that was a common conversation that we had even as a board of an organization that exists to bring equality uh, in the greater Erie area. And some of our board members or advisory council members were saying, okay, well, we, we have marriage equality, so now what? And, um, you know, I think that uh, later this year, the Supreme Court is supposed to hear the issue of marriage equality for the entire nation. And so there's lots of conversation about that. But um, there are organizations that existed to bring marriage equality to Pennsylvania. And so uh, the kind of the general conversation was, so now what's next? And, and the truth is, is that just because marriage 
is legal for uh, same-sex couples does not mean that we're done uh, educating, working with people that may disagree. Um, Back to that policy versus mm -hmm. what's felt or understood right. in the community. Um, tell me what, and I don't mean to backtrack too much, but when we say equality, sure, what are we saying? The, uh, so I think that this uh, conversation has happened so many times in our history uh, from why should women be treated differently than men? Why should African-American citizens be treated differently than uh, Caucasians or European-American citizens? Why is it that uh, people with differing abilities, uh, whether mental abilities or physical abilities, should be treated differently? Why, do, um, why does discrimination against veterans occur? And so I think when we talk about equality, it's just the idea that you should be treated as a human being and uh, that that sh the outside package shouldn't matter. Uh, that you should not necessarily have to be treated differently just because you may look different on the outside. And that can be tough. I mean, kind of going back to where you worked with children, adolescents, and adults, um, you know, obviously you've seen that a lot. You're acculturated or learned. Um, perspectives or viewpoints on the world often happens when you're young in those formative years. Um, and then they, they, they may or may not change. Or again, at a later point in your adulthood, that may or may not change. Um, people may be uncomfortable with changing their internal views. Absolutely. So to, is, it a, is it a push? Is it an invitation? Is it, uh, tell me what that, uh, when, you, when, we talk in, when uh, you're talking to people um, who you want to get involved mm -hmm. um, in the discussion, or at least have a better understanding of people, a better understanding of equality and what that means. Because when we're talking this equality and change, it's not just the abilities of those certain population, those people, it's also for the other people who may be um, discriminating or harbor ill will or whatever it might be, right? So tell me, um, what, how does that happen? Like what's, you know, where, where are the, uh, the grinding points? Where are the, the places that you could coalesce or, or work mm -hmm. with people on that? Yeah. All over, really, at every intersection of society, I think, uh, and our community, I think we face that. And the idea is that education is not hammering into people's minds and making them change. We realize that uh, what makes a society or a community great is that not everyone thinks alike and not everyone agrees on everything. So that's what uh, fuels creativity and design and invention and, and uh, working together. But I think that what we work towards is uh, let's have a conversation about that and uh, you're acting in a way that says that you don't want to work with me or you don't like me because of a particular aspect that is not necessarily changing about me or changeable about me. And so let's have a conversation about why that is. And uh, I think that the Greater Erie Alliance for Equality seeks to build that platform or that safe space where uh, we can come in and talk to people that may be vocal against us and just say, well, we invite you to get to know us and we can get to know you and see where, where are we different and where are we able to find common ground and work together. So, How easy or hard has that been? And um, what, what makes it easier, what makes it harder? I think what makes it easier is that when there are people that are from opposite sides that stand up and say, I don't know if I agree, but I'm willing to come to the table and talk. I'm willing to, or I may not be part of group X, Y, and Z, uh, but I know someone personally who is, and so I'd like to advocate, or I'd like to be an ally and extend that hand of friendship or at least communication. And so I think that it's really, the straight allies that we seek to um, 
work with in order to uh, build those bridges with uh, parts of our community that aren't as accepting or um, eager to embrace equality. Quickly, tell me, when you say ally, what is, what is an ally? I think an ally essentially is someone who may not uh, identify themselves as being uh, part of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender uh, community, but that they are um, aligning themselves with the idea that they should be treated equal. And so they're in support of uh, the LGBT community um, coming to the table as equals. And maybe acting as that bridge too. Exactly. Say, yeah. um, what's next for GEA? The greater, where, where do we go next? Mm -hmm. Or what's at least for this year, if not the larger picture? Sure. Well, for this year, one of the main things that we're trying to do is to conduct a needs analysis. So there are a number of different um, parts of the LGBT community that we're seeing may not be having their needs met um, by the groups or the resources that are available. Uh, so that can look like a number of different things between not having anywhere to go on a Friday night that's friendly and that's not a, a bar, uh, or it can mean not having a place to go as a homeless youth and not feeling safe in your own home and not having a place to go that's uh, friendly for you as a, uh, a lesbian teenager or a transgender teenager. So that's a pretty broad spectrum. Yeah. So what we're intending to do is conduct a needs, uh, a needs analysis of the LGBT community in Erie. And then uh, once we've identified some needs and some holes uh, in services and opportunities. Uh, we want to, again, look to our allies uh, to build some bridges and create a network of support uh, for the LGBT community. Uh, whether that's a place where they can celebrate and uh, be themselves and have a, a place to call home, or uh, just a network of providers that um, people know where to get in touch with uh, when they identify somebody with a need. If they want to learn, if the people want to learn more about Greater Erie Alliance for Equality, where can they go to get that information? So the best place is the internet, right? We have a web page, uh, which we are updating right now, and it's just, uh, you can Google search Greater Erie Alliance for Equality, and uh, that would be the best place to go. Uh, you can contact us through uh, a toll-free phone number that we have. We have an email link there. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. So those are places that you can get in touch with us and ask questions or find out more information. Great. Thank you so much again for joining us, Will. Right. I do appreciate everything that we learned today. Continue doing the great work in your community. Thanks, Jay. Tune in again next time for the next episode of Starting Points. Have a great day.